we continue to recommend ourselves as God's ministers. Sorry for the long break, folks. I'm not enjoying the best of health and very busy trying to get things in order. I'm at the point where I am in a very somber mood where the Watchtower organization is concerned. This spiritual evil is so serious and I am in a no-nonsense mood. This is no time to sugarcoat the spiritual mess that some 8 million people find themselves in. People may think it is just a cynical comment from a hateful opposer when I say the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses do not know God. Here is Kenneth Cook proving the point once again that they are just spiritually empty egotistical men drunk on power and on the outrageously blasphemous lie that God has complete trust in them telling the outrageously blasphemous lie that Jesus appointed them in 1919 and the utterly disgusting lie that Jesus commanded that you trust them, telling those lies to an enormously gullible people too lazy to open the scriptures to see if that claim is remotely true. Cook is talking on the topic. Jehovah is close to his worshippers. Hear him with breaking news to Jehovah's Witnesses. But to show you just how empty these religious frauds are, let us look on the scripture on which his talk is based. Psalm 139 verses 1 to 4. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. And this is a take that Kenneth Cook Jr. has on that. Today's text comments remind us that Jehovah is near to his worshippers. No, Mr. Shallow, I am near to my friends, but I don't know when they go to sleep, when they wake up, and every thought in their heads. I do not know all their ways. No, sir, the text is revealing far more than Jehovah is near to his worshippers. But your spiritual shallowness is about to be revealed even more. The fact is that Jehovah can see whatever he wishes to see whenever he desires to do so. The fact is that Jehovah can see whatever he wishes to see whenever he desires to do so. Jehovah can see. Not that he does see, but that he can, if he wants to. You see, some things he doesn't want to see, so he doesn't see those things. He doesn't know about those things because he is not paying attention to those things is what Cook is suggesting. He is selective about what he sees. He doesn't want to see when Kenneth Cook is before the camera revealing how empty of a shell he is when it comes to who God is. And so, I guess, Jehovah did not see when the nitwit was shooting that video. But if you think that that is bad enough, it gets worse. The dim-witted spiritual leader of the gullible has an intellectual explanation for why Jehovah doesn't see everything. The fact is that Jehovah can see whatever he wishes to see whenever he desires to do so. Now we say uh, he chooses to do this or he can see things whenever he wants to see them because he's not enslaved to his own power as if he can't control it. What a phrase. Enslaved to his own power. Enslaved, trapped, cornered, 
helpless. God is not enslaved to his own power. But God cannot not be God. He cannot not be omnipotent and omnipresent. It is not that he is entrapped. It is who he is. God is not enslaved to love. Love is simply who he is. He is not enslaved to mercy. Merciful is who God is. That's his character because he is God. Where do these goons come from? Believe it or not, it gets worse. The scriptures tell us that sometimes he uses angels to report to him about certain matters. Have mercy on Jehovah's Witnesses, O oh God. Have mercy. These people are in a mess. Their poor little Jehovah doesn't want to see some things, so he turns his attention away from them. But somehow, he is still interested to know what is going on. So he sends angels to look at the things he doesn't want to look at and come back with a report. So some of the things he knows, he knows them directly. But he chose to get other information secondhand. The governing body does not recognize that God does not treat his angels or us as human beings as robots. He doesn't just reveal things to us and tell us to take it from him without allowing us to see for ourselves. God could have told Moses that there were giants in the land of Canaan, but he allowed Moses to send spies to come back with a report. God is not just telling his angels that there is good and evil on planet Earth, but allow them to see for themselves and tell him what they see. When you read the first chapter of the book of Job, where the angels were reporting to God, it was not on what he does not know, but what they have discovered. In his conversation with the devil, for example, when God asked, have you considered my servant Job? God was telling the devil what he knows about Job. God does not need angels to report to him about what is going on because get this Kenneth Cook, he is omnipresent, meaning everywhere, and omnipotent, meaning he knows everything. And if you do not know that about God, you do not know God. What is amazing is that the psalmist in Psalm 139 is telling the nitwit that God sees and knows everything. Yet the nitwit is telling Jehovah's Witnesses utter rubbish. But what else can Kenneth Cook do when he does not know God? If he did, he would not dare join the fraudulent governing body telling lies on God about being appointed in 1919, about being completely trusted by God and participating in the lie that Jesus commanded people to trust them. They are utterly disgusting. We've now discussed three examples of Jesus' voice. Number one, trust the faithful and discreet slave. I did not watch another second of that video because, quite frankly, the man has revealed enough about how spiritually empty they are. And it is really annoying to sit and endure this nonsense parading as a morning devotion talk. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.